Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Witness. When we left off I was mostly done at the shipwreck, although I'll have to come back for the vault once I figure out what to do with different size and different color hexagons. I'll just, uh, I'll demo for you right quick <clears throat> that what we know Oh, well, first of all, it looks like we've got an invisible symmetrical line, which is always nice. So I need to make sure all the hexagons are hit appropriately. That I, that much I know. Over two, so wait, over one, down one. Over one, down, nope, over two, down one, back one, down one, nope, doing this wrong, over one, down three, over one, down one, so now we're in the second row, over one, now it's hitting the other one, I go over two, nope, if I go down one, over one, up one, See, that's back, over, and up. And I go over. Nope. I gotta do this, 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 and this. Now they're all hit, but there must be more to it because of the sizes. So we'll come back once I have a little bit better sense of how to decipher that. In the meantime, let me see if I can't find my way back to the castle, or the keep. There we go. Let's head up the laser tower now. Knowing that we still don't know what to do with Tetris pieces. On a panel. But also knowing that we have done these other two environmental puzzles, which is pretty cool. And also knowing that we can go ahead and activate the keep laser even though we'll have to come back to solve the other puzzle once this panel's lit we can turn on the laser with this panel all it requires us to do is retrace our route through the mazes so we did this lower left one first and the way we went we can retrace it because the walls are showing us where we had to go pretty straightforward second one is tougher, but I'm remembering, I think, I hope, correctly. Same with this one. I think it was this, and this, and this, and this, and then this one was here, and here, and here. Oh, god damn it. I accidentally right-clicked. That was all on me. Anyway. We're in maze number two, and I am almost positive it went like that. Maze three, I am, again, 
almost positive it went like this. Base 4 was this, 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 and this. Nope. I fucked at least one up. <clears throat> Maze 4 I had right. Maze 1 I had right. Let me just run down and eyeball 2 and 3 right quick. Because the whole idea is just to retrace your path through all four of them. Yep, I had this one right, as I thought. And this one... Oh, this is the one I fucked up. Let me try and memorize that before I get back up there. Okay. I think I can do that. I ought to be able to. Let's give it a whirl. Get where we can actually see the panel. This one's obvious. Just looking at it. This one I'm still 99% sure of. Now this one apparently went like this. And then this one there we go. Whichever one of these you do first will be sufficient to activate the laser. I'll wait for it to turn on. And it's there, pointed at the mountain. Awesome. Now we've got a couple of an easily doable environmental puzzles here. You can see how nice and straightforward this one is. That's always fun. And if you're paying attention, there's another one right there. Also nice and straightforward, as these things go. Now I just think to myself, what next? Let's get out of here. Not ready to do most of the town, although we can probably tackle part of it. The town is kind of like the final exam in that it synergizes all the rules you learn everywhere else on the island. But what I think we can do is collect a few audio logs that are scattered around here before we do anything else. One right down here next to the town obelisk. Your question is the most difficult in the world. It is not a question I can answer simply with yes or no. I am not an atheist. I do not know if I can define myself as a pantheist. The problem involved is too vast for our limited minds. 
may I not reply with a parable? The human mind, no matter how highly trained, cannot grasp the universe. We are in the position of a little child entering a huge library filled with books in many languages. The child knows someone must have written those books, does not know how, does not understand the languages in which they are written. The child dimly suspects a mysterious order in the arrangement of the books, but doesn't know what that is. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of the most intelligent human toward God. Albert Einstein, 1930. Um, can't get in there yet and I don't know Tetris pieces or what to do with those star things goodness I do think I can get another one up here right now yes I can oh my god how does it happen in this poor old world that thou art so great and yet nobody finds thee that thou callest so loudly and nobody hears thee that thou art so near and nobody feels thee that thou givest thyself to everybody and nobody knows thy name men flee from thee and say they cannot find thee they turn their backs and say they cannot see thee. They stop their ears and say they cannot hear thee. Hans Dank, circa 1520. There are a couple more in the town. Well, there's one more in the town that I may be able to get to now. Oh, and I don't even need to, I can get these two, so I can get in this way, of course. However, until I open, for reasons that will become clear later, until I can open this door, I don't actually know what to do with this panel. But, we'll listen to the audio logs. It is a great adventure to contemplate the universe beyond man to contemplate what it would be like without man, as it was in a great part of its long history and as it is in a great majority of places. When this objective view is finally attained and the mystery and majesty of matter are fully appreciated, to then turn the objective eye back on man, viewed as matter, to view life as part of this universal mystery of the greatest depth, is to sense an experience which is very rare and very exciting. It usually ends in laughter and a delight in the futility of trying to understand what this atom in the universe is, this thing, atoms with curiosity, that looks at itself and wonders why it wonders. Well, these scientific views end in awe and mystery, lost at the edge in uncertainty, but they appear to be so deep and so impressive that the theory that it is all arranged as a stage for God to watch man struggle for good and evil seems inadequate. Some will tell me that I have just described a religious experience. Very well, you may call it what you will. Then, in that language, I would say that the young man's religious experience is of such a kind that he finds the religion of his church inadequate to describe, to encompass that kind of experience. The God of the church isn't big enough. Richard Feynman, 1963. Now we've got a second one to listen to in there, but before that, I feel like I can solve this panel.
when I walk in, I'm on a nice soft green stuff. Oh, let's be real. Okay, I walk in and I'm here. Up to right, down, right, down, right, up, right, up. left, even though it's blocked, I would go, I think, oh shoot, now I don't know. <laughs> See, I'm trying to figure out what it wants me to do. The entrance is at the lower left. The exit is at the upper right. So I could either... This could be the entrance, and that could be the exit, or it could be vice versa. Let's try this first. Right. One, two, three. Up. Left. Left. Up. Left. Up. Left. I'm going to assume this is the exit, because that's the way it worked in the other ones. So it started out... Right three, up, left two, up, okay, right three, up, left two, up, and then what? <clears throat> and then left, up, right, up. Right, down, right, down, right, up, up. Right, three, up, left, two, up. Left, up, right, up, right, down. Right, down, right, up, up. That's it. Good. We got it. Now, let me go play the second log out of here. Imagine if all the tumult of the body were to quiet down, along with all our busy thoughts about earth, sea, and air. If the very world should stop, and the mind cease thinking about itself, go beyond itself, and be quite still. If all the fantasies that appear in dreams and imagination should cease and there be no speech, no sign. Imagine if all things that are perishable grew still. For if we listen, they are saying, we did not make ourselves. He made us who abides forever. Imagine then that they should say this and fall silent listening to the very voice of him who made them and not to that of his creation so that we should hear not his word through the tongues of men nor the voice of angels nor the clouds thunder nor any symbol but his very self which in these things we love and go beyond ourselves to attain a flash of that eternal wisdom which abides above all things and imagine if that moment were to go on and on, leaving behind all other sights and sounds but this one vision, which ravishes and absorbs and fixes the beholder in joy, so that the rest of eternal life were like that moment of illumination which leaves us breathless. Would this not be what is bidden in scripture? Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Augustine of Hippo, circa 400. Good. Now there's some more stuff that we can go ahead and do here in the town. As but one example, there's a sequence of environmental puzzles 
on this central tower that we can solve just by making sure we get the perspective right. There's one there, there's one here. There's a tough-ish one here. Only tough in that you really have to get the alignment exactly right, because the lines are so close to you. And then one more on the one remaining corner. good stuff. Um, let me see. Can I get up here? Because there's another audio log to listen to. I sure can. That's awesome. The concept of a clock enfolds all succession in time. In the concept, the sixth hour is not earlier than the seventh or eighth, although the clock never strikes the hour, save when the concept biddeth. Nicholas of Cusa, 1450. Well, that was pretty basic, but still. Thanks for that, I suppose. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can actually do here yet. A lot of the town is reliant on synergizing a slew of rules that we haven't actually learned yet. But I think we're honestly pretty close. I forgot we can do an environmental puzzle up in the top of the bell tower. Well, let's do that right quick. That seems like a decent idea. Always fun. Where to go next? I think now is as good a time as any to start watching videos. Now we only we've only actually unlocked one so far. Let's jog over to the windmill. No, we need to hit the hexagons. It's actually pretty basic. Now this one seems to have two solutions. They both seem to run up to the windmill. That one doesn't seem to do anything. That one has started it turning. That's awesome. We'll be playing with that some more in a bit. Uh, let's head down these stairs underneath it. Let's see what there is to find. This is straightforward color separation. We know how to do this. And that brings us into here, to an AV room, where we see a symbol a lot like what we uncovered in that vault earlier. Let's go back and look at that blueprint, 
because this looks like the place where we can put it in. All the way back to the entrance fort, more or less. tough for me to tell exactly how it's actually oriented. I think it's... I think it's like this. You start here, just zigzag through. Pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Let's head back to the windmill then. That is not an exit, just kidding. I sure hope I've got this right. Yeah, this is correct. You can tell by where the start point is. I did it wrong. This is backwards. Scientific knowledge. It's hard to take because it removes the reassuring crutches. <clears throat> it's running out this way. I was wrong. And leaves only what is demonstrably true about the world. And the reason why so many people may be thinking about throwing away those crutches is because made a third hour by your interpretation of them. Things like that. As opposed to this. Know what it is? It's a bunch of amino acids. Stuff that goes to build up a, a worm, or a geranium, or you. This stuff's easier to take. There we go. This scientific knowledge is okay. hard to take because it removes... Now with all that done, we can go ahead and act... Alright. That's all we can do here for now. We'll find other you're probably guessing correctly five other blueprints to watch other videos there's a stray panel in here Let's solve it on our way by now oddly enough we don't we still don't know what to do with tetris pieces but cancellation symbols well that's something i do understand so if i do it this way this ought to work. So I've got one white in with the blacks and a canceller. I've got one black in with the whites and a canceller. <clears throat> and we'll come back later for this one. Tetris pieces. So we'll leave the shipping container. For convenience's sake. I'm going to summon the boat here to the town dock. As you head up from the dock, oh my gosh, it's a symmetry panel. Now, what I don't know 
and am trying to figure out is uh, where my guideposts are. I think there are those palm trees back there. Let's try and position the panel so they line up in a coherent fashion, more or less. Okay, we do that, then that, then that, then that, then that. Wouldn't you know, we got it. Booyah. Next. Oh, looky here. We can see the path to take on the vine way up here. So it looks like it's over, up to, stair step down. Now let me see how that dovetails with the shadow I can see. Yeah, okay, so far so good. But I need to... And it's over to stair step up with a loop out. So in other words, move to stair step up with one little loop before exiting. <laughs> that powers on this. I really don't know what this is pointing to. I think I can figure it out. We've got a fruit, just like in the orchard. So, first, let me... F we got four branches here, right? There's one where branch four is missing. Right there. There's another where branch... Four and branch six are missing. That's right there. Okay. Another where branch eight is missing. That's right there. So we're in this bottom branch. And we're on number six where the fruit is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Outstanding. <laughs> And now, if I move into here, well, what is this? I see three exits. And three starting points. One of them I can pretty clearly see rule number one from Shaded Trees. No such luck on the other two. I wonder, can I get upstairs on this thing? Yes. Second one goes the good old desert ruins route. I just get my own stupid shadow out of the way. can see almost exactly where it goes. My only problem is I can't tell what happens in the very top right corner. But I bet I can cipher it out. Okay. Now it 
pretty much has to be this, doesn't it? And then we go like... Uh, come on. Trace it. There you go. Oh, damn. I fucked something up. Maybe it just does this. Yes. Good. There we go. Now I have some idea about the third route. Which comes from a rule I don't think we've actually learned yet. Um, yeah. Not so much that we haven't learned the rule. It comes from the monastery. So, but it's just another iteration of paying attention to the environment. So you can see the start, up and left, and down and around and out. Up, over, okay. Yeah, I think I got it. So it was this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this, and then I want to say this. It may have just been straight out. Alright, I messed something up. Uh -huh. you, gotta, you gotta do your level best to turn the whole thing into an overlay. It looks like maybe it swings out all the way. That's my mistake. So, we go. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Boom. Maybe like this. Or maybe it's this. There it is. Anyway, that's just... I'm saying we know that one because it's just another application of paying attention to the environment. And anyway, that powers on a panel up here. And we can see part of the path. Again, combining rules. But we can't see all of it. Start here. But then what? I don't know. I can't tell until I get over here, which requires some more rules that I don't really know. Now this looks like a fine place to redirect the desert laser. Get it pointing toward the mountain like the others. Let's just spin this panel. You can do that with a little bit of basic trial and error. And you need to turn it, I think, just one more. Maybe two. Oh, nope, I fucked that up. Wrong way. Or maybe I had it to begin with, and I just had a brain malfunction. Yep, there we go. We've pointed the desert laser properly to the mountain now. Oh, man. <clears throat> so, 
I swear this shit is bananas, y'all. I think I've done about all I can do in the town for now. That may not quite be true. Let me see. Yeah, we got an inv got a nice. I can't do that one here. I got a nice environmental puzzle here we can do fire it right into the obelisk like a boss now what good question let's descend as I think I've done all I can do in here for now Until I learn some more rules. And get to some different spots. I think I can probably do the monastery next, but in fact, I think that's a pretty good idea. Let me just think for a second if I really want to go that way. Yeah. Yeah, I do. So the first thing we can do at the monastery notice another fresh obelisk over there is solve several environmental puzzles you can see that circle at the top and all these different patterns we seem to be encouraged to make let's start with one of the bigger ones Now we can go a little more basic. I don't quite have it lined up right though. Now I'm too close. There it is. already get a pretty good bead on the next one right here and now I think we're ready to tackle the most complex one Just track down the right perspective. I think this will do it. Uh, need to be up closer to get over that rock. There we go. Ah, good. go up a level. We're not done. Oh, you thought we were done? It is to laugh. Gotta get so the uh, 
plant isn't blocking me. Then hit that one. Now, we can get working on the door. While the first gate's creaking open. Let's do the simplest one of all. And now we're able to get inside. Lovely. So you find this little bonsai here. And you're able to solve the puzzle in various ways. What each option actually does is open the shutters for whichever side you leave open. I'm opening this side first, just because there's an audio log to get. There is nothing in existence but veils hung down. Acts of perception attach themselves only to veils, which leave traces in the owner of the eye that perceives them. Binarabi 1231. Now, let's open up this side to start solving puzzles. While we wait on the shutters, I'm going to take a quick little detour out here to get our next audio log. How am I doing on time? Doesn't want to tell me. So be it. Damn, I really wish I remembered when I'd started, but I think this game disables the Steam overlay. Oh well. Our next log is here. Oh Lord God, helper of those who seek you, I see you in the Garden of Paradise. And I do not know what I see, because I see nothing visible. I know this alone, that I know that I do not know what I see, and that I can never know. I do not know how to name you, because I do not know what you are. Should anyone tell me that you are named by this or that name, by the fact that one gives a name, I know that it is not your name. For the wall beyond which I see you is the limit of every mode of signification by names. Should anyone express any concept by which you could be conceived, I know that this concept is not a concept of you. For every concept finds its boundary at the wall of paradise. Should anyone express any likeness and say that you ought to be conceived according to it, I know in the same way that this is not a likeness of you. So too, if anyone, wishing to furnish the means by which you might be understood, should set forth an understanding of you, one is still far removed from you. For the highest wall separates you from all these, and secludes you from everything that can be said or thought, because you are absolute from all the things that can fall within any concept. Nicholas of Cusa 1453. Interesting. I especially like this statue reaching for what looks like a holy grail. And if you look at the shadow, he's reached it. There's not really any further purpose to that, but I certainly find it interesting. We can get two more audio logs before we really start tackling the monastery in earnest. They're here at the entrance to the jungle. <laughs> we join spokes together in a wheel, but it is the center hole that makes the wagon move. We shape clay into a pot, but it is the emptiness inside that holds whatever we want. We hammer wood for a house, but it is the inner space that makes it livable. We work with being, 
but non-being is what we use. Lao Tzu, 6th century BC. And this one. The glass is transparent, the wine transparent. The two are similar, the affair confused. There seems to be wine and no glass, or glass and no wine. Sahib bin Abad, circa 990. All right, shutters should be recalibrated by now. Let's head back here. If you look out here, you can see that these panels don't really give you any clue about the correct route, but as we were able to figure out in the town, if we line the perspective up right, these carvings will tell us what the correct route is. Pretty cool, right? I thought so. It's always just a matter of finding the right perspective. The exit is on the left. So find the one that looks like a maze. You can just see the little circle in the end point. What the fuck? Thought I had that one. I was tracking it through the fucking branches. What do you want from me? Okay, let's do that one again. Okay. So here I am, right? Yes. Oh. Do you want me to go like this? Or is it sufficient to go like this? You aren't actually telling me. But I can see that some pieces are broken. So, in reality, there was something here before it broke. So this... What the heck? Oh, I'm failing to notice some other broken pieces. That's probably the issue. Alright, get your shit together, Travis. It's not that hard. You just have to pay attention. Alright. I got two broken pieces, right? Yes. I see it now. We start here, and we go like this. Now, one broken piece is apparently there, and the other would be here. This has to be it. Yes! Good. Alright. Oh, shit. <clears throat> this one requires some transposing. Looks like just a simple zigzag, but remember that I'm looking at it in reverse. So it's like this, then this, then this, then this. Now that has opened the door to this little garden, which is kind of cool. But more significantly, it's activated some more panels in here. I want these shutters open now, so I'm going to do that. And if you're wondering about where your uh, directions are, the answer is somewhere around here. But you do have to find the correct perspective, which, let's be real, can be difficult.
Surely it's not this easy. Well, maybe it is. What do you know? It is. Let's try this one now. A little tougher, to be sure, but... Still pretty straightforward. If you're paying attention. Let's try this one now. This time, you'll notice it's actually directing us through. Start left to, up to, left. I almost need to write this down. So it's left to, up to, left. Up, right to, down, right. And then we make a Tetris piece. So left to, up to, left. Up, right. Yeah, hold on. I completely lost it. Okay. I almost had it, actually. Left to, up to, left, up, right to, down, right, up to, left three. Left to, up to, left, up, right, two, down, right, up to, left three. guessing it's split into two. Left two, down, right. Left two, down two, right up, right. Okay, there's a broken one on the ground. I need to figure out where that might have been and which one it w which way it would connect. It goes down to and then zigzags down. That would be it. Okay. Left to, down to, right up right, down to, zigzag down. Left to, down to, right up right, down to, zigzag down. Beautiful! Alright. Now note the, uh, note the fruit out there that we can see through the shutters. There's one environmental puzzle. We'll get a second one shortly. Just gotta get this lined up properly. Now the last one is pretty interesting. As you'll notice, there's a gap. The answer is to close the shutter and much like we did with the boat, we'll have an opportunity to cross the gap. Which I think is always kind of fun. Eh, 
And there we have it. Beautiful, isn't it? I know I like it. It's good stuff. Anyway, that about does it for the monastery, if I remember right. I think it's time to go activate another laser. Oh. And we can also open the other gate straight across from the keep. Alright, let's turn this one on and let her power up. That's five lasers, y'all. We're killing it. And despite having just opened this entrance, I'm gonna head back this direction. There's one thing I, one other thing I just realized I might be able to get to in the town, even lacking knowledge of stars and Tetris pieces. <laughs> Anyway, if you feel uncomfortable that we knew about the monastery rule, you could do it now if you wanted to. What I am interested in is simply, if I can fucking find it, I think I need to get to the next rooftop because this one's Tetris pieces. Yeah, it's, it's over by one more. Okay. That's fine and dandy. Let's head into the jungle. Because we still have some time. You paying attention? Gotta look up as well. I really like that one. I think it's super cool. Alrighty. Let's, before we do anything else, let's actually rip through here. Over to the other side, just because here by a boat dock is another audio log. Kind of sequestered away One down here. I happened to be occupied with the subject of generation of waves by wind. I took down the standard treaties on hydrodynamics, and under that heading I read, if the external forces P prime sub YY, P prime sub XY, be given multiples of E to the IKX plus AT, where K and A are prescribed, the equations in question determine A and C, and thence, by 9, the value of eta. And so on for two pages. At the end, it is made clear that a wind of less than half a mile an hour will leave the surface unruffled. At a mile an hour, the surface is covered with minute corrugations due to capillary waves which decay immediately if the disturbing cause ceases. At two miles an hour, the gravity waves appear. As the author modestly concludes, our theoretical investigations give considerable insight into the incipient stages of wave formation. On another occasion, the same subject of generation of waves by wind was in my mind, but this time, another book was more appropriate, and I read, There are waters blown by changing winds to laughter, and lit by the rich skies all day, and after, frost, with a gesture, stays the waves that dance, and wandering loveliness. 
He leaves a white, unbroken glory, a gathered radiance, a width, a shining peace under the night. The magic words bring back the scene. Again, we feel nature drawing close to us, uniting with us, till we are filled with the gladness of the waves dancing in the sunshine, with the awe of the moonlight on the frozen lake. These were not moments when we fell below ourselves. We did not look back on them and say, it was disgraceful for a man with six sober senses and a scientific understanding to let himself be deluded in that way. I will take Lamb's hydrodynamics with me next time. It is good that there should be such moments for us. Life would be stunted and narrow if we could feel no significance in the world around us beyond that which can be weighed and measured with the tools of the physicist or described by the metrical symbols of the mathematician. Of course, it was an illusion. We can easily expose the rather clumsy trick that was played on us. Ethereal vibrations of various wavelengths, reflected at different angles from the disturbed interface between air and water, reached our eyes, and by photoelectric action caused appropriate stimuli to travel along the optic nerves to a brain center. Here, the mind set to work to weave an impression out of the stimuli. The incoming material was somewhat meager, but the mind is a great storehouse of associations that could be used to clothe the skeleton. <coughs> an impression, the mind surveyed all that it had made and decided that it was very good. The critical faculty was lulled. We ceased to analyze and were conscious only of the impression as a whole. The warmth of the air, the scent of the grass, the gentle stir of the breeze, combined with the visual scene in one transcendent impression around us and within us. Associations emerging from their storehouse grew bolder. Perhaps we recalled the phrase, rippling laughter. Waves, ripples, laughter, gladness. The ideas jostled one another. Quite illogically, we were glad. Though what there can possibly be to be glad about, in a set of ethereal vibrations no sensible person can explain, a mood of quiet joy suffused the whole impression. The gladness in ourselves was in nature, in the waves, everywhere. That's how it was. It was an illusion. Then why toy with it longer? These airy fancies which the mind, when we do not keep it severely in order, projects into the external world should be of no concern to the earnest seeker after truth. Get back to the solid substance of things, to the material of the water moving under the pressure of the wind and the force of gravitation in obedience to the laws of hydrodynamics. But the solid substance of things is another illusion. It too is a fancy projected by the mind into the external world. We have chased the solid substance from the continuous liquid to the atom, from the atom to the electron, and there we have lost it. But at least it will be said, we have reached something real at the end of the chase, the protons and electrons. Or, if the new quantum theory condemns these images as too concrete and leaves us with no coherent images at all, at least we have symbolic coordinates and momenta and Hamiltonian functions, devoting themselves with single-minded purpose to ensuring that QP minus PQ shall be equal to IH over 2 pi. I have tried to show that by following this course we reach a cyclic scheme which, from its very nature, can only be a partial expression of our environment. It is not reality, but the skeleton of reality. Actuality has been lost in the exigencies of the chase. Having first rejected the mind as a worker of illusion, we have in the end to return to the mind and say, here are worlds well and truly built on a basis more secure than your fanciful illusions. But there is nothing to make any one of them an actual world. Please choose one and weave your fanciful images into it. That alone can make it actual. We have torn away the mental fancies to get at the reality beneath, only to find that the reality of that which is beneath is bound up with its potentiality of awakening these fancies. It is because the mind, the weaver of illusion, is also the only guarantor of reality that reality is always to be sought at the base of illusion. Illusion is to reality as the smoke to the fire. 
I will not urge that hoary untruth, there is no smoke without fire, but it is reasonable to inquire whether, in the mystical illusions of man, there is not a reflection of an underlying reality. Arthur Eddington, 1927. All righty. <clears throat> We're in the jungle now. We're going to learn some new rules, solving these puzzles about integrating audio. First, let's solve a stray panel. Listen. It went high to low, so it works. Let's go to the next one. High, high, low, middle. You just have to listen and track the sa track the pitch of the sound that the bird is trilling every time. <laughs> Naturally, it's going to get harder. Distracting us with the cell phone. Hmm, damn it. Gotta listen harder, I missed it. I missed the first one. There, high, low, middle, middle. Good. Dun, 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 dun. Hmm. 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 That doesn't make any sense. Can't hear it. Well, I only hear f I hear five notes, but I only see four. Things. How is that possible? Dun, dun, dun. And then it goes up again right here. <sighs> it's playing the wrong fucking sound. It has to be. Yeah, it is not playing the right sound for that panel. 
It can't be. That's the one I already heard. Okay, okay. What about this one? Give me a new sound. Yeah, that's that one, which we already heard. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, we've done that one. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, this is killing me. I get... Where am I supposed to stand? It's another four note trill. Wherever the right sound is. With a long note at number three. thought I heard it that time. Okay, now I'm just... I almost think part of it is finding the right speaker to stand next to. Five notes. God, I couldn't understand that. That one was a long second note. Come on. I only have four notes. I need a long... Dum, 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 dum. Yeah, I'm just trying to brute force it now. I can't do that. Come on. Where is the right fucking sound? Dun, 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 dun. Or it's probably this panel. That one with two long notes I'm hearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Come on! This is killing me, Smalls! Because like... that is the same bird trill as this one. Even though... The ambient sound is different. I'm half convinced... It's playing the wrong one. It almost has to be. It's the only way... It's the only way I could get the same trill over two different sets of background noise. Wait a minute! Wait a minute, let's hear it again. Oh fuck, it's the howl! Do 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 Here I am, getting all butt hurt at the game. again. I could have sworn it went da 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 da. Good. That's the idea. You gotta start listening to different noises. Jesus fucking Christ, Marie. Alright. <clears throat> so now we gotta track down where that other cable was running to. Which we can work on, but along the way, we've got, surprise, more environmental puzzles. Like that spectacularly cool looking one. In about 20 minutes, we'll be at the two-hour mark, which is when I just flat-out have to quit. But I can tell you that I just happen to recall several environmental puzzles, which you can probably already guess, hidden in the green streaks on all these trees. You can see you're able to make circles and everything, so let's work on these a little bit. Gotta get it lined up right. There we go. There's number one. We head over here. Another one is pretty easy to see. Got to make sure we get connected all the way. Well, this one's fun. There's a yet another circle we can make here. 
and we can track all the way over our heads down into there to create another one. Now if we hang a left here, we can see the monastery obelisk that we're working on completing. If you give it a really good look, let's see we can track if I get the perspective right all the way up that first level of stairs and solve a puzzle there. Good times. There is yet another one over here that we can create from this ledge assuming that you have the garden gate open. If we head back in here, there's another one still to find here in the trees. I think this is it. About 15 minutes to go. Anyway, all the sound panels turned this one on. And when we hit it, it raises a gate. We can't go back. What the fuck? Don't worry, it's not a big deal. As you'd expect. It's actually planned. But... As we truck through here, look to the skies. Clouds are fun, aren't they? Oh, come on. Just gotta get the perspective right. There we go. Oh, now what the hell is this? Is it just because it's a dark cloud? Do I have to wait a while? Come back when it's white? It's been known to play that trick sometimes. But it might just be that they aren't contiguous. But I don't have the perspective right, because I don't think these clouds move like some of the others do. I mean, I could be wrong. This sure looks like it ought to work. Maybe the dark one does move. I gotta come back at some point. Because they cycle. I don't think these are moving though. Definitely because that one is dark. Maybe it turns light. Once I f turn on more lasers. Yeah, because those aren't moving. And the... Uh,
Anyway, let me put this in my backlog to come back to. I'm not sure why that cloud is dark. But it's not moving, it's not changing color. I bet I just have to turn on another laser or something. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Instead of worrying about that, let's head back into here. There is another easily solvable environmental puzzle if we just loop around. See it very straightforward right there. And there's another one in the garden as well. We have it's on us to get the perspective right. Ah, my mistake. There it is. There we go. Good stuff. And now, a couple more things to do that I think I can accomplish before my 10 minutes are up. First, let's head down here where we see a hexagon color separation, and a vault of sorts. We got to figure out which perspective actually works to get through the thing. It's got to have an exit at the top, entrance at the bottom, and it's got to work nicely in tandem with all the other rules as well. Let's look at this one. If we do this, it's not functional. Because we can't hit the hexagon. I don't think. Yeah, we can't hit the hexagon and still make it up. So that one isn't it. <clears throat> well, okay. Let's find another. You gotta get the perspective right. Always got to get the perspective right. Could be this one. See, we go through here. I don't think I quite have the perspective right now.
Well, I don't think this is it either. This could be it. Ah! What do you know it is? Booyah. Now before I leave, there's another environmental puzzle. It's very difficult to see, but the leaf here has a little green tip on it. Which turns out to be the key. <clears throat> and for our final trick this go-round... Let's head into this vault, get another blueprint for a video. Remember where the starting points are. <coughs> I think it looks like this. Start here, go all the way out and around. Now let's run back to the windmill. Yep, that one's still dark. It must just it must just turn light once I activate a particular laser. I don't fucking know which one though. <laughs> oh, but that's okay. Well, let's head into here. Okay, so this was the starting point, and it went like this, then this, then all the way around and exited here. Now I'm going to fast forward this one almost all the way to the end to start with, because it's got an environmental puzzle with it if you go to the back where the screen is busted. And now we can start it from the beginning. Watching it will be close to the last thing we do, if not the last.
Almost over. When you hear that click, you know it's done. <clears throat> now I'm very near my absolute ceiling. There's one last thing I want to do, mostly to make sure the game is actually saved. And that is, I run all the way back out there. And this is really just a matter of opening up access. If I run the whole loop all the way back around, look at the juggler, the shadow, I mean, it's kind of cool. Anyway, I digress. Let's head over here. Up and around and down. Because every time you solve a puzzle is when the game saves. Let's just save with the second of six videos watched. And note the pretty easy, obvious solution to this gate found by going like that. And now we have access direct from the garden to the back of the jungle, and I'm going to end the video here. This has been Let's Play The Witness. We got the castle, laser, ke castle or keep laser and the monastery laser. Made a lot of progress. Well, a lot. Made a modicum of progress in the town. Watched a couple videos. It's just, there's a lot to do in this game. Next time, we'll pick up back in the jungle where we left off. Until then, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please consider clicking an ad, liking, sharing, or subscribing, any or all of which really help me out. Regardless, please know that I really appreciate the time you spend watching and hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.